Good morning, Hope City Church. How is everyone doing today? How's the rest of you doing? Good? Seems like it's louder on the right side than the left side. I just I don't know what's going on over here if you guys didn't go to bed in, at the right time last night. But we need a little more energy on the left side of the church, just saying, okay? Uh, a lot's happening, obviously. If you, you know, leave here saying, well, man, church is boring and there's nothing really to do at church, you are not paying attention. There is something happening for you. Let's get involved. I'm excited for the fall. I'm one that likes the fall. I enjoy summer. Um, I guess the, really the only season I do not care for a whole lot is like from January, February, you know, first of March. For some reason, that's not my favorite time of year. But um, I'm excited for what God is going to be doing here in the fall. So many things happening. Uh, Shane went through it all. I want to just mention next week, uh, Pastor Justin will be back and he'll be sharing in the pulpit. He's going to be sharing a message next Sunday and you're going to get to meet um, our student interns that were here throughout the summer and he's going to be sharing a message that they wrote. So I'm excited. It's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to what God put on their heart as a group of young people who just said we're going to take the summer to uh, see what God has for us in our life. We want to serve in, in a higher capacity. We want to just kind of get plugged in and go a little deeper. So they helped Pastor Justin put a message together, and he's going to share that next Sunday morning. So you should be here for that. That's going to be exciting. Uh, and then we have a vision message coming up on the 10th, and as Shane said, 17th homecoming. So lots happening. I'm, I'm really looking forward to the fall. How, how many are looking forward to the fall just for spiritual purposes? Come on, for spiritual reasons. Like, I'm expecting God to do some great and miraculous things in our local church. And let's just pray, Lord, let that begin with me. Right? Let it begin here. Let's not just pray abstractly. It's like, you know, Lord, we want you to do something in our church. Let's, let's realize that we are the church. And let's pray, Lord, do something in me. Let it start here. Don't let me miss out on what you're doing. This Wednesday night uh, is prayer night as usual, but a little, a little special focus and emphasis is going to be held around our teachers and our students. Uh, this week, all of our teachers go back to class uh, in, pre in preparation for the school year, and then students, of course, uh, next week after the long weekend. So can, if you can make a, an effort to come out Wednesday at 6.45, we're going to spend some time praying for our teachers, and our students as they get ready to kick off another school year. Well, we've been in the, the book of Psalms throughout the summer. If you haven't been around or you've been traveling, hopefully you've been catching up online. We've been just going through the Psalms. It's called Summer in the Psalms. Today's message is titled, Your Roots Are Showing. Grab your hair. No, not, not those types of roots. Uh, for all of the, you people that dye your hair, um, Someday maybe I'll, if I still have hair, maybe I'll dye it someday, I don't know. <clears throat> but we've been going through Psalms, and it's been, it's been fun. I've been enjoying it. Every, every lesson, thank you to all those that shared and spoke from the Psalms. It's been encouraging. Um, Pastor Ryan is wrapping up the series in, in Sussex this morning at Calvary Church, and, and I'm privileged to wrap up the series here today. I thought we would end our series in the Psalms at the beginning so we're going to be looking at Psalms chapter 1 today. That's our text. If you have your Bibles, whether on your phone or, or paper copy, if you want to open up to Psalms chapter 1, we're going to be reading there. It's not long. It's six verses, and we'll get to that in just a moment. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's sad, but good. You know, we're, we're wrapping up uh, the Psalms, which indicates the end of summer, uh, but... Um, Again, looking forward to what God is going to do. This psalm starts out talking about the blessed life. Now, one thing I think we all would agree upon, that in our life, no matter what your background is, whether you're a follower of Jesus or you're not, if you're just a human being and you have breath in your lungs, you want to be happy. You want to enjoy life. Is there anyone in here that that's not true of you? Like you just, you want to be miserable and you want everything to go wrong in your life? Anybody? No, I didn't think so. And probably the same for everyone joining us online. We have this common goal 
It's something that, that's put in us, I believe, by our creator to enjoy life and to be happy. Um, the Bible uses, I think, a better word than happy because happiness always has to do with what's happening around us. But in, in our text and throughout the scripture, you'll see that we are challenged to seek after the blessed life, to be blessed, to, to, to live the blessed life. Now, right away in our North American materialistic context, we think that blessing means uh, finances or stuff or things, and that's not at all what the scripture's talking about today, and that's not at all what I'm talking about today. We're going to discover what truly the blessed life looks like, at least, at least some of what it looks like to live out the blessed life and how we accomplish living the blessed life. So we're going to read um, the six verses today, and then we'll, co- we'll come back and kind of break it up into sections. The translation I'm reading from, um, my notes, I'm not sure what you have in front of you or what's on the screen. It begins with the word blessed. Some translations say, um, oh, the joy of those who, it kind of means the same thing. So let's read. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked. Or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers, not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. Father, I thank you for your word today that is alive. This is your word. We believe, God, that you spoke this, that you inspired men to write this, Lord. And so we thank you, God, that we can gain wisdom and knowledge for our life and a pathway for life through studying your word today. Lord, prepare us for what you'd have us say in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to start out by just saying, um, this would be a reminder for a lot of us today, if if you've been around church, if you're a believer in Jesus, I I want to just remind all of us that this book is written about a man. All of this book is written about one man. And his name is Jesus. Now, you'll find different stories in the Bible and different lessons, and you'll find Old Testament stories and accounts of things that happen in God's, for God's people. You've got New Testament writings. You've got the epistles to the church. You have the Gospels, which is Jesus being revealed to us. But the whole book, the whole Bible is pointing to a man called Jesus. Do you, do you believe that today? Is, are, you, are, are you convinced of that, that this book is about Jesus? And so through the Old Testament, you'll find Jesus in the stories of the Old Testament. You say, well, I don't see him there. You, well, he's there. No, it might not use his name, Jesus, but in the Old Testament, they're, they're looking for the Messiah that would come. And so all of the, the, the Old Testament writings and the law is pointing towards Jesus, and Jesus would come, and he would fulfill the Old Testament. He'd fulfill the law. He's the only one who fully and completely fulfills the scripture. His name is Jesus. In the New Testament, in the Gospels, you have Jesus being revealed to us. In the Acts of the Apostles, you have Jesus preached as the hope of the world. In the epistles to the churches, you have Jesus explained in correction for the church. And in Revelation, Jesus is expected to return. The whole book is about Jesus. And so when I read Psalms chapter one, I'm looking for Jesus. In Psalms chapter 1, there's only one person who fully and completely can fulfill the the verses in Psalms chapter 1. So when I come to Psalms chapter 1 and I read that blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. 
whatever they do prospers. When I read these verses, I'm doing so in the context that Jesus is the only one that can truly fulfill these verses completely. And so that I realize that I am in Christ as a follower of Jesus. And when I strive to be this person, when I strive to be blessed and live the blessed life, I must do so not in my own strength. I must do so as someone who is in Christ and understand that apart from Christ, I can do nothing. Apart from Christ, there is no hope for me. And so we see Jesus in all of Scripture. I have three points that we're going to go through today before we let you leave this morning. So you're kind of a prisoner, if you don't mind, just sitting with me. Let's, let, let's break up verses 1 and 2. My first point is this. The blessed life is being shaped by Christ. In your pursuit of happiness, joy, in your pursuit of the, the best life possible, in your pursuit of all things that put a smile on your face, you have to understand that if you're going to achieve it, your life must be shaped by Christ. We can, we can differ on, on what causes happiness. Our opinions can change, and you can ask a, a, you know, many believers. You might get a different answer. You can ask non-believers, and I just want to bring you back to truth, which is God's word. The blessed life has to be shaped by Christ. Verses 1 and 2 again, blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. What we're actually being told here, when we understand that, that the word of God is connected to God, that the Bible says that the word became flesh and dwelt among us, that's speaking of Christ. When we understand that, when we're told to meditate on the word of God day and night, yes, we need to read and know and study God's word, but we're, in essence, we're being told to meditate on Christ, to be thinking of Christ, to be wrapped up in Christ, that our life has to have its beginning and its, and its day-to-day uh, going through life surrounded in Christ. I want to, to be formed by Christ. So is your mind, is your heart, your thinking, the, the, your emotional life, is it being shaped by the truth of God's word? Ask yourself that question this morning. Is your life, is your thinking, is your outlook, are you being formed? You want the blessed life. You want to be blessed. You want to enjoy this life. Then my question is, are you being shaped and formed by God's word? So you can pursue all the things that life has to offer. And those things will leave you empty and wanting more. Those things will leave you hollowed out inside. Those things will not satisfy your soul. Sure, even the Bible says that it will give you pleasure for a moment. Yes. But why do people get so far down the road when it comes to sin and the pleasures of this life? It's simple. It doesn't satisfy. And so they go further and further and further down a road of destruction looking for the blessed life. And the blessed life only comes when we are molded and shaped by Christ, your heart and your mind formed by Christ. This might be old-fashioned. You might call me crazy. You might think, well, that, that doesn't fit for today. But I'm still of the opinion that it matters who you're letting influence your life. It matters who you give a voice to in your life. It really, you know, you can say, well, you know, I'm just... I, they're just, they're good people, and I'm just, you know, I, I like them, and I'm just hanging around them, and, you know, I, I don't think that everything they do is right. No, it really has eternal consequences on who you let speak into your life. What is shaping you? What, what is influencing you? Today, it seems like, well, we just gravitate to the loudest voice. 
Whatever society's yelling about the loudest, well, that must be what we have to kind of shape our life around because it's getting the volume. It's getting the attention. It's, it's gravitating. You know, everyone's gravitating to this subject or this, this situation or this, this ideology. And so, well, that must be what we have to do. I challenge you to be careful on what influences you, you allow. You have control over this. What influences you allow to speak into you? What voices you allow to speak into your ear? It does matter. It does have consequences. If you, if, if, if you notice the text, can we bring up verses 1 and 2 again? If you notice the text, it doesn't talk about, and, and maybe you can write this down in your Bible, make notes. It doesn't, talk, it doesn't tell you, don't be wicked. It doesn't tell you, don't do this and don't act this way. It deals with our thinking. It deals with things if you stay around long enough, if you, if you hang around this long enough, you're going to start to change how you think. If you walk in the counsel of the wicked, it, if, if, if you, it doesn't say if you walk in the counsel of the wicked, or if it says if you stand in the way with sinners. It doesn't mean stop sinners. It means stand with them, be with them. You will begin to delight in what is sinful. If you sit in the seat of scoffers, eventually you will find yourself being a scoffer. It could just say, don't do this. Don't sin. Don't be a mocker. It says, don't be around. It's talking about influence. It's talking about who you allow to speak into your life. The world comes up with definitions and ideas for things that sound nice on the surface. It, it seems good. But when you compare it to scripture, it's false. And when members of the body of Christ are letting something other than Christ form your thinking, the end result is confusion for a world that needs clarity on what is truth. The church, the body of believers, the bride of Christ, we can't afford to be confused on what is truth. And confusion comes when we allow other voices outside of Jesus Christ to shape us. Well, this, this sounds good. This seems right to me. And so I'll shape my life around this. Well, Jesus is love. So if we just love everyone, then everyone will be, everything will just be okay. Do you know that Jesus is love is not the whole message? That's leaving part out. Jesus is love, yes, and Jesus is truth. So, well, we just have to act like Jesus. We have to be, how many, how many love this word, tolerant? <laughs> I hate that word. Uh, we have to be tolerant of what people want and how they feel. No, we have to be Christ-like. We have to be shaped by Christ. Yes, he was loving. Yes, we show kindness. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean we're tolerant of everything. I'll move on from this point, but the blessed life, the happy person, delights in this book. The opposite of blessed is cursed. The cursed life does not delight in this book, is not formed by this book, is not shaped by this word, does not meditate on Christ day and night, does not find joy in the law of the Lord. It's serious today. It's, it's heavy today. It's a, it's a heavy way to end our, our, our summer in the Psalms and our, and our Sunday morning in the summers here, but, but it's, it's truth today. If you want to pursue the blessed life, it's a life that meditates on Christ. It doesn't hang around with. It doesn't entertain mockers and sinners and wickedness because as you become familiar with that atmosphere your mind begins to adopt those philosophies and those teachings for my second point uh, we're going to skip over verse three um, the second point is the blessed person looks to eternity with gladness i want to jump down to verses four to six, and then we'll come back to verse three in a moment. 
It says, not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. The blessed life, the blessed person, if you're, if you're living the blessed life today, you should be looking to eternity with gladness. There should be excitement. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ today, there's excitement when you think about eternity. Like, I still believe in the literal return of, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Is anyone in the room today, you believe that? Jesus is returning. He is coming back. And that should cause excitement. If you're living the blessed life, that will cause excitement. But if you're the opposite of the blessed life, if you're living the cursed life, I could see why that should cause some fear, some anxiety. If your eternity is unknown to you today, if you're not sure what happens to you when your life on earth is done, that should cause some concern. All throughout scripture and even in our text today, there's this theme of two running throughout scripture, two men, the first Adam and the second Adam, Christ, two choices, disobey or obey. Eat the forbidden fruit, do not eat the forbidden fruit. Two paths, the wide path, the narrow path. Two destinations, hell or heaven. In our text today, the wicked and the righteous, the blessed and the cursed. And you see a separation happening in our text. There will be a day. Listen, there will come a day. Right now, we, the Bible says that the, the, the weeds and the wheat are growing together. The, there's coming a day of separation. There's coming a day where there will be separation. That the righteous and the unrighteous will not be in the assembly together. The judgment of God is this, that sinners will not be in the assembly of the righteous when life wraps up on this earth. You say, wow, this is, this is encouraging today. Wow, thank you for inviting me to your church. There's coming a day, like this is, I, I, I don't want to make light of this, but it is heavy, but it is serious, and there are consequences to what we believe and what shapes our life. And so if you're sitting in this room today and you say, like, I, I don't know where I stand. I don't know what happens when I'm done here, when I breathe my last breath. That is not a good place to be. So this is, this is terrible news for, for, the, for the unrighteous. It's, it's blessed news for those who are righteous in Christ. This is, this is awful news for someone who is not in Christ. This is the best news that, for the believer that, that we can tell you that someday you will go to be with Jesus forever in a literal place called heaven. And the unrighteous will not enter in. Say, well, what do we do about this? I mean, this, this, is, this is good and both bad. Well, it's already been done. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. The future for the wicked is bleak, but the future for the, and the future for the unblessed is, is worse than anyone can imagine. But the opposite is true for the righteous. The person whose life is shaped by God's word, delighting in it and meditating on it, will have a bright outlook as you gaze into eternity. Sure, life can get hard sometimes, but that's why we are blessed because we know that the troubles and the cares of this life are momentary. And we have a blessed hope. Verse 6 says, For the Lord watches over those, or he knows the way of the righteous or the blessed. The word knows in the Hebrew was yeda. It speaks of an intimate knowledge. It's not, it's not just like, God. okay, God's checked you off a box. He knows you intimately. Those who are shaped by the word, those who are meditating on Christ. He knows you intimately, and you, in turn, know him intimately. And so today, those, those two choices stand before us. The blessed life, the cursed 
life. My third point is the blessed life produces a good crop. The blessed life produces a good crop. I titled this message, Your Roots Are Showing. And this is where, verse 3 is where the title came from. As I get this image of a tree, as I read verse 3, let's bring it up again. It says, that person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose, and whose leaf does not wither. And whatever they do prospers. That person, the blessed person, if that's you today, if you are meditating on Christ, thinking on Christ, being formed by his teaching, the Bible compares you to a tree that is planted by streams of water. It symbolizes that you are always tapped into the source, always connected to the nutrients that you need to build the life that Christ wants you to build. And so I got this image of your roots are showing. You say, well, wait a minute. Roots do not show. You, you go look outside when you leave this room. Any tree that is healthy, you do not see their roots. But yet you know their roots are on full display based on what the branches appear, how they appear. What fruit is growing from the tree? You look at the, some of the giant oak trees along the side of our property here at Hope City, and you know that the root system is going down deep. When you see thousands of acorns falling off the tree in, in this time of year, you know that the roots are going down deep. You see the result. You see what's happening, and you know the roots are plugged into something good because of what the tree itself is bearing. He said, he said that you are like a tree planted by streams of water. You bear fruit in its season. I want you to get this image today of, of a tree bearing fruit, not, not a worker picking fruit, but a tree just lush with fruit hanging from its branches and a blessing to those around it, those who find shade in it, those who find that they can eat something from that tree. Your roots are showing. I kind of nerded out a little bit on, on, on this idea of roots, and I, st I did an internet search for about 30 minutes on trees. Exciting, I know. That was part of my week. Trees have fascinating root systems. The, maybe some of you know this, but the first root that begins to grow, you take a seed and you plant it in the ground. The first root that starts to grow down deep, before you ever see the tree or when the tree's in its early stages, its beginning stages, what's called the tap root starts to grow down. And this tap root will grow as far as it needs to grow to find the nutrients and the water supply that will sustain the tree as it grows. I, I studied some large trees. There's a tree in South Africa. It has a name. I couldn't pronounce it, so I didn't even try to. Um, they, they measured the tap root. This tap root, because the ground and the soil was dry, this tap root measured 400 feet down in search of nutrients and water so that it could sustain the growth of this massive tree. It's one of the, it was in the Guinness Book of World Records of one of the largest trees in the world. But its tap root went down 400 feet to find the water it needed. Out from the tap root grow all sorts of other types of roots. And they all have their own names. And they all have a function and a purpose. And they're all drawing nutrients into the tree so that the tree can grow healthy. I also learned that any healthy tree... You go look at the branches. It's called the canopy of the tree. The root system will grow three to five times larger than the canopy of the tree. So you see a canopy that's, you know, you know 30 square feet. There's some trees that have uh, four square miles of canopy, one tree in India. And the root system stretches out something like 90,000 square feet. It's massive. Because the root system has to su sustain the branches. And that's what the Bible compares your life to as a believer, as a follower of Jesus. In our text today, you're like a tree that is planted. 
And can I tell you that your roots are on display today? We can look at the life. You should be able to look at my life and say, well, what is he planted into? I'll just use me as the example. You can leave yourself out of it. But you should be able to look at me today and say, well, what is he planted into? What is he tapped into? What is his source? Are his roots going down into the soil of God's word? Am I being formed and shaped by this book? Am I producing anything out of my branches that would be a blessing? Understanding, again, that I'll bring you back to the point that we have to be in Christ. None of this happens outside of Christ. None of this is possible on our own. John 15, I know this isn't in the Psalms, but if you'll bear with me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. If you remain in me, I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire, speaking of judgment, and they are burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Showing that you are a follower of Jesus. If we're not connected to, if we're not woven into Christ and remain in Christ, we will not produce fruit from our life that will be a benefit to us or anyone around us. And so when, when, we, when we come to your own life, when you look in the mirror, I'm not pointing fingers at anyone today, but I challenge you to look in the mirror of your own life. Hold up the mirror, which is God's word, and say, what, what is my life producing? Your roots are on full display. What you're tapped into, what you're plugged into, what you're grounded in will show up in a life. What you're plugged into will come out in your life. Will, is your life producing blessing, joy, peace to those around you? Is your life producing hurt, heartache, pain to those around you, to yourself? What are you tapped into? What are you building your life on? Blessed is the one who does not walk with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers. I, I, I heard a message one day on, on those verses. I can't tell you who shared it or where I was. I can't give them credit for it. But the message was entitled, The Three Postures of Sin. Walking, standing, and sitting. Walking, standing, and sitting. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers. We begin walking with or living in step with the wicked. Well, they're just my friends. Ah, I just, they make me laugh. I'm not doing anything wrong. I just enjoy their company. I'm not, I'm not partaking in it. I don't do that. I'm just with them. They're my buddies. They're my friends. I've known them for years. They make me laugh. They tell funny jokes. I'm not really, I'm not doing anything that they're doing. Then our mind begins to change. And we begin to stand in the way of sinners. That means I'm with them. These are my people. I am with them. I've got their back, and they've got my back. And you begin to have conversations that you never used to have, and you begin to say things that you wouldn't used to have said. And you, and you begin to think ways, well, I, I don't think it's that bad, and I, I think this is okay, and it's not hurting anybody. And then you sit in the company of mockers. You partake. You are now one of them. We stand, we walk, we sit. Blessed is the man, blessed is the person who does not. Blessed is the life who realizes it's not healthy 
for me to walk with, to stand with, to be sitting in this company. Blessed is the life who realizes there's a way to live. It's God's word. If the Bible teaches us anything, it teaches us that whatever shapes our mind shapes our life. Whatever influences your mind will influence your life. It will direct you. The challenge in Psalms 1 is for us to make the choice in this life that leads to blessing. It's why, it's why Paul told us to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Because what, how we think is the direction we're going in. What kind of fruit are you producing as you stand with me today? Some of the, some of the things that, that worry me that I see is what people say, well, I'm just, I'm just kind of living neutral. I just want to be neutral. I don't want to really get all in with Jesus, but I'm not doing anything bad. There's no such thing as carbon neutral in nature and in, and in the spirit. Your life is producing something. Your life is producing something. It's not just, well, someday I'll produce for Jesus. Someday I'll get plugged in and planted and my roots will go down deep in God's word. Someday I'll be formed by God's word and someday I'll, I'll be a blessing to those around me and I'll, and I'll get serious about the Lord. But right now I'm, I'm not doing anything wrong. I just don't want to get all in with Jesus. Well, you're producing something. You will either produce the fruit of the Spirit like Galatians 5 talks about. You'll produce blessing and life and people will find you to be a joy around and people will be gaining from your life as you pour out. Or your life will produce hurt and hardship and heartache and lies and pain. But there's no neutral. We're either moving towards Christ or away from Christ. Our text has two, uh, two men, two paths, Two choices, two ways to live your life, blessed or cursed. And today before us is that same choice. Do I want to build my life on God's word or do I want to build my life on something else? Your roots are on display. What your life is producing is an indicator of what you're planted into and how deep your roots go down. You can be shallow and surface deep and not really get planted and plugged into a local church and plugged into Christ, and that'll show in what your life produces. Or you can get wrapped up in, totally immersed in, sold out to the Lord Jesus Christ and build your life on a foundation that will last no matter what comes your way, no matter what storms hit you, you will be like a tree planted by streams of living water. You can reject Christ in the blessed life or you can accept him. Isaiah 55, 6 and 7 says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on them and to our God for he will freely pardon. That is the choice. All throughout scripture, that is the path. That is the choice. Those are the two options. And today in this room and online, those are the options. We can, we can pursue the blessed life, which is found in Christ, or we can reject the blessed life that Psalms 1 talks about. And we can go the way of the wicked and live the cursed life. That is the choice that I brought with me today. That is the choice the scriptures give us. And I leave that choice with you in this room today with your heads bowed, your eyes closed. And I wonder, is there anyone in this room who's ready to make that decision today. Just as I pray, I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to, 
to talk to you today. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you that I have something to build my life on, that I can have nutrients from the word of God, that I can put my roots down into something that will last and sustain me into eternity. I thank you that the blessed life is offered. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would speak to someone today who's got a decision to make to go after the blessed life which is in Christ or continue to walk in their own understanding and walk in the cursed life that is apart from Christ. Those are the only two options. There's no way, Lord, that I can make that look any prettier or dress that up in a way that's more appeasing to us. There's two options, Lord. The blessed life in Christ and the cursed life outside of you. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit is just gently calling someone to you. I pray for the believer today, Lord, who's just been surface deep. Lord, that they would get planted deep in your word. That they would abide in you, Christ. That you would produce out of them a life of blessing. That they would be a hope, reflecting your hope in this world. I'm going to ask today that if you're in the room, just continue with your heads bowed and your eyes closed. I just want to give opportunity this morning before we worship for someone to make that decision. Maybe you're here this morning and you came to church and you, know, you were invited and someone brought you or you just showed up and you say, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about eternity. I have questions about eternity. I have questions about where I will spend eternity. I have questions. Am I living the blessed life or am I just living life for myself? If that's you today and you've, and you've come to the realization, I need Jesus to save me and forgive me of my sins, would you just raise your hand in this room? If there's anyone in the room today, thank you. Anyone else? No one's looking around. Thank you. Anyone else today? No one's looking around. It's just you and the Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the work you're doing. Church, we're going to pray. I'm going to ask everyone to pray together. For those of you that raised your hand, you're, you've, made, you've made a decision today that you want your roots to go down deep into Christ. You want to surrender. You want to lay your head on your pillow tonight without a question of eternity. I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer along with the church today. Receiving Christ as your Savior. Dear Jesus, I thank you that you came to this earth and you lived a perfect life and you died on the cross for my sins. I repent of my sins today, Jesus. I ask you to come into my life. Forgive me. Lord, I want to be planted in you. Help me to live for you from this day forward. Help me to live the blessed life, understanding that that is the life in Christ. In Jesus' name I pray. And the church said amen. Amen. Come on, can we rejoice with those that prayed that prayer today? Listen, I know this is a big step. I know this is a big step for you. You prayed that prayer. You made a decision. You want to get right with God. I'm going to ask you, as we sing this song of worship, I'm going to have some prayer team members come right here on my left. Would you just take a step of faith? of boldness, come out of your seat, come talk with someone. If you prayed that prayer this morning, come have a conversation today with someone so they can help you in the next steps. Don't do it alone. Do not try to follow Christ by yourself. That's what the church is for. Come on, let's worship him today.